this morning um, we're in the last part of chapter 14 of Proverbs. But there was one, one verse that I, I just camped on and thought about and um, meditated on and prayed through. And it's verse 34. Um, Solomon writes that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness, we've talked a lot about righteousness. Um, Solomon uses that word a lot. And that word righteousness just means a right path, being obedient to the word of God, being obedient to the principles of God, honoring God, worshiping him, having a knowledge of God, expressing that knowledge of God to others, um, just righteousness. And um, we've talked about not not having just an outward righteousness, but when Jesus spoke of righteousness, he, he he went to the heart, and that's where righteousness emulates from, is the heart. And the Bible tells us that uh, the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? But the good news is, Jesus said that um, he, he, has, he has given us a new heart when we come to faith in him. He transforms us. He changes our heart. I, I know for myself, I don't know about you, but... Um, I hope this is the case, that when you came to know him, there, there was an immediate transformation. The way you once thought, you no longer think that way. Yeah, we have temptations and we fall into those thought patterns, but the Holy Spirit, thank God for the Holy Spirit. He convicts us and brings us back to a path of righteousness in our heart. And here Solomon says that righteousness exalts a nation. Not in the sense of stature as much, but but it lifts a nation. It lifts us lifts a whole culture of a nation and when there's righteousness in the land and uh, we're we're all very aware that that we see that that measure of righteousness in our land and our nation has been on a long slippery slope our nation has never been fully righteous uh, we, we need to acknowledge that there's always sin and there always have been sinful people uh, but the degree of that seems to slip more and more, even when uh, now I think the percentages have turned where those uh, do they believe that there is an all-powerful God that we answer to. And, and the majority of our nation kind of says, no, there's not. Um, well, with that comes unrighteousness. It, it comes an accept, there, there, there comes an acceptance of unrighteousness in the land. Uh, Isaiah said this in Isaiah chapter 5. He expressed the woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And it it seems to be, at least in, in my lifetime, and it's getting more, that there are those who call what once was evil, now they call it good. And what they call, what once was called good, is now called evil. Um to where there is a persecution, although it's not physical at this point, but there's a, a shutting down of the expression of righteousness, um, of what is right and what is wrong, uh, to where there's no consciousness anymore, it seems, of what is right and what is wrong. I'm reminded of, uh, or was reminded this morning, of Romans chapter 1, and I've read this passage a lot of times uh, on the daily devotions, but Man, it's so pointed. It was this way in Paul's day. Um, it was that way when Isaiah wrote that in Isaiah chapter 5 when he's prophesying against Judah and, uh, and Israel. And so it is today. And Paul writes this in Romans chapter 1 verse 18. He begins by saying, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness or unrighteousness you could you could substitute that with that. And, and, and the unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Uh, man's unrighteousness suppress the truth. Uh, if you remember the story where Jesus came to Nicodemus, or excuse me, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. And Jesus said, um, the unrighteous don't like the light. I am the light, and, and they reject the light because they fear that their wicked deeds will be exposed. And that's what's happening when righteousness is expressed. And I'm not talking about Facebook posts. That 
I'm not sure that that does a whole lot of good. I, I, I think what does better good or better good or more good is those who are Christ followers, that, that we express that, that we are salt and light in our community where we are, in our own homes, in our church, in our community where we work, where we express righteousness, not necessarily verbally, but just in the way that we live as well. And where, where that exposes evil deeds and unrighteousness. He goes on to say this, that for, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power, his divine nature have been clearly perceived. We see it in nature. Ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Verse 21, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up. In the lust of their hearts to impurity and dishonoring their bodies among themselves because they exchanged, here we go, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. He says again, second time in verse 26, for that reason, God gave them up. God gave them over. Uh, let's jump down to verse 28. Since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, here's the third time he says it, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. And then he begins to list all manners of unrighteousness. Um, and I want you to notice in, these, in these, uh, these descriptions of unrighteousness that Paul puts here, he mentions the, 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 the blatant outward sin, and he also mentions minor sins that we might call of gossip. In the same category, any path of unrighteousness is what we might say. Listen to verse 32. Uh, though they knew God's, or they know, or the, though they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but they give approval to those who practice them. We're living in that kind of a day that not only people give approval. Uh, to unrighteousness, but they they applaud um, those who practice unrighteous deeds. Now, what what do we do in response to that? Well, well, there are two things that came to my mind as I was meditating because I realized I can't have an influence in my whole nation. You can't have an influence in your whole nation, but I can have influence where where God has placed me. I can have influence. You can have an influence of righteousness right where God has you. It, it doesn't do any good to cast it way out there. We don't, have, we don't have a platform for that. But what I do have and what you have is a platform around where I dwell, where I live, where I have that influence. And so um, let's begin to practice righteousness there. But here are the two things I think we, we ought to do, how we need to respond as believers. Number one is pray, that we've got to pray. Um, man, I, that we have to pray for those who are who, ha who have a national platform of influence, whether it's an influence for righteousness or if it's an influence for unrighteousness. We need to pray for them. We need to intercede and call on God to move on the hearts of man. Only God can do that. Only God can change a heart. And so we need to pray and ask God to do that. The second thing that that I was led to do this morning personally was to ask God to search me and and see if there wherever there's a hint of unrighteousness, where it may be in my thought life, um, it, and, and typically that's where it begins for us, right? Um, it, it may be in in actions, um, it may be in word, it may be in attitude, it may be expressions of unloving heart or unkind heart. But ask God this morning, God, search me right now.